Good afternoon or morning wherever you are in the world today and welcome to our international live stream. Uh, we do hope you've been enjoying our online chat so far and thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we have a great live stream planned for you guys. We're going to be talking about several different things uh, from the range of courses that we have here at Demont for University to employability prospects to life as an international student in Leicester. And uh, we've also been joined by a representative from each of our four faculties to kind of just give you guys that real insight into what life is like um, studying within each faculty. Uh, we also have our colleague Yunan Smith from uh, the DMU Works team, who's going to be talking to you all about uh, employability and career opportunities here at Demont University. So without wasting any more time, I'm going to let each of my wonderful guests introduce themselves, just who they are, as well as what they do. So I think we'll start with Jonathan, and then we go around. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jonathan Fisher-Jones. I'm the Associate Dean International Faculty of Lifetimes. Um, yeah, I look forward to speaking to you in a little bit more depth about the postgraduate course in the faculty shortly. Thank you. Then I think we've got Alex. Perfect, thank you. Yes, my name's Alex. I'm the marketing manager for the Faculty of Computing, Engineering and Media. And like Jonathan, I'll be taking you through our courses uh, that we and everything we have to offer you in, in CHEM, so Computing, Engineering and Media. Look forward to speaking to you then. Excellent, and we've got our academic from the Art and Design School. I'll let you introduce yourself as well. Thank you, Flo. Good afternoon and good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Jiayi Wang. I'm the Associate Professor International for the Faculty of Arts, Design and Humanities. Just like John and Alex, I will be taking you through the courses in ADH or Arts, Design and Humanities faculty. Great, thank you so much. And we've got Business and Law. I am the Associate Head for people, politics and place in the Faculty of Business and Law. And I'll be telling you a little bit about some of the programs that we offer and some of the exciting things that you can look forward to when you join us. Excellent, thank you so much, Julie. And finally, we've got DMU Works, our colleague from DMU Works. I'll let you introduce yourself as well. Hi everyone, I'm Minaxi Patel and I'm the placement manager uh, as part of computing engineering and media faculty and I'll be representing DMU Works and telling you all about the different services we've got and how we can support you in terms of your careers and employability here at DMU. Great, thank you all so much and I'm really looking forward to uh, learning a little bit. I'm not a student but I'm still looking forward to, uh, to learning more about the faculties here and what, what we have going on at DMU. So without wasting any more time, I think we're going to go straight into our first talk and that's going to be with Jonathan from HLS. Uh, you can take it away. Fantastic, thank you Flo. Um, well again, thank you all for joining us here today. Um, so, as I briefly mentioned, I'm the Associate Dean International at the Faculty of Health and Life Science. So, the Faculty of Health and Life Science was started as a school of pharmacy um, 111, 112 years ago now, back in 1909. Um, so, as I'm sure you know enough about the DMU broadly, I'll just focus on the faculty. Um, we're very lucky in the unique aspects of our course and how professionally focused they are whilst being informed by research, which enables our opportunities. You know, they've been trained by clinical staff to give advice and guidance about bowel cancer, worked with a national charity to where, raise awareness for type two diabetes, which resulted in referring hundreds of people at risk to the local GP. They support cancer patients through our link with Macmillan nurses and the C Word project, save lives by encouraging new people to join the UK stem cell register. They've mentored local school children and helped to support their educational needs. They've also helped inmates in prison to feel like part of a community in order to reduce violence and drug taking in prison. But those are very Leicester centric um, outcomes from the courses. You know, the impact our students make and experiences are available and not simply combined to Leicester or even just the UK. We support and often subsidise students to undertake international experiences, designated to enhance their CV and improve the lives of the people and communities they visit through projects, such as DMU Global, 
our Square Mile India project, where we send approximately 60 nurses, audiologists out to Ahmedabad in India to help support the local communities through research and teaching and through all the international links we have with universities across the world. Um, our students have already done the things that I've told you, but internationally they've raised awareness of type 2 diabetes in Kentucky, America, attended lectures and conferences in Denmark, Vancouver, Paris and Florida. And they've delivered science workshops to the school children in Bermuda. They've also visited Auschwitz as part of their criminology studies and much, much, much more. So the faculty is broken into four separate schools. I'll give you a brief overview of now. And I'll tell you the courses that are on offer to the overseas community. So first of all, we have the Leicester School of Pharmacy. And the whole emphasis of pharmacy is to produce career ready graduates. That's the main aim of this long established school, which boasts professional accreditations from the General Pharmaceutical Council and Chartered Society of Forensic Science, as well as incredibly strong industry names. The teaching we give reflects a latest understanding from across the sector. While students have the chance to boost their CVs through a number of placement, volunteering and international experience opportunities. This approach has seen our graduates go on to secure jobs globally and recognise company, many of which you'll be far more familiar of over the past 18 months, including GlaxoSmithKline, AstraZeneca, um, LGC Forensics and Boots, as well as the NHS, Pfizer, amongst other humongous companies. So that's the Leicester School of Pharmacy. The, oh, excuse me while I get my notes. Um, the next school is the School of Applied Social Sciences. Um, this is professional accreditations from organizations, including the British Psychological Society, National Youth Agency, and strong links with graduate employers to ensure that the innovative courses, such as Health Psychology, MSc, Psychological Wellbeing, MA, and Educational Practice, you'll benefit from contact with industry professionals, opportunities to gain placement experience, take up volunteering work and undertake research, helping you to acquire the range of invaluable and transferable skills that are relevant to you in your future lives. We also have the Leicester School of Allied Health Science, which boasts our medical science, biomedical science, but in the postgraduate world, we have um, uh, courses such as advanced biomedical science and a brand new course, which is global health. With many of our allied health science courses, they're often accredited or endorsed by professional bodies. So you can absolutely be assured that you're receiving the teaching of the highest quality with a focus on building the skills sought after by graduate employers. Our courses also enable you to further develop your knowledge and experience in real life settings during supported work placements. I'm sure we'll get on to later with DMU Works, as well as career enhancing DMU Global and DMU Local Initiatives. Sorry, I'll have to track back. I forgot to mention the postgraduate courses in pharmacy, which include pharmaceutical quality by design, which essentially looks at the process of developing drugs and how quickly we can get it to market through batch development, as well as pharmaceutical biotechnology. Um, that's all for me. So we've got a very short video for you to watch, which will hopefully be a little bit more engaging than I am. So thank you very all. Thank you all very much for listening, and I'll see you soon. It's been incredible the past three years. I feel much more ready to go into the world of work now. DMU is more than just a degree to me. It offers more opportunities than any other university I've looked into. It encompasses every other thing outside the campus, on campus, about the city centre, about the Leicester life. Everything from sports societies to DMU Global, DMU Local. It enhances your opportunities while you're here so that your employability afterwards is far better than other people at other universities. For me, the course has gone above and beyond what I initially expected. We come out and just like, this is this was the right path for me. I've had a fantastic experience from the start of DMU. I think definitely I've got a passion for helping others who are like me and definitely something in the future that I'd like to do. I did some volunteering at DMU Square Mile and it involved handing out meals to the elderly um, over Christmas time and it was a really pleasurable experience. Volunteering events that I've done is being part of teaching children in schools 
as a future pharmacist, I do want to go into a sort of teaching pathway, so it's been a good sort of stepping stone for me. Start of my final year at university, I did um, volunteering with the De Montfort Students' Union. It was really um, interesting to just see these big things happen and knowing that I was a part of it. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Jonathan, for that. And next we have the art and design talk. So uh, without wasting any more time, I'll let you take it away. Thank you, Flo. And if you don't mind, you could put the slides um, on for us. That'd be great. Yes. Thank you so much. OK, so I'm from the Faculty of Arts, Design and Humanities. As a faculty, we bring together award winning students world-leading research and innovative thinking. So we are serious about giving our students the very best experience possible. And our ambition is to provide them with all of the tools they need to achieve their aspirations. And all of our students belong to one of our three schools listed on this slide. Each school delivers a wide range of courses as well as overseeing world-changing research and fostering enviable commercial links that inform our teaching and ensure our courses are relevant to modern employers. As you can see, the first school is School of Art, Design and Architecture. It's worth mentioning that the origins of De Montfort University are actually in the Leicester School of Art, established in 1870, 151 years old. So our subjects are among the oldest at DMU and also in the UK. The second school is School of Fashion Textile, Textiles. And the third school is School of Humanities and Performing Arts. So in, this, in the next slide, you will be able to see our award, a corner of our award-winning Video Patel building. And at, at the very end of my talk, I will ask the host to play a video of our amazing uh, VG Patel building and the facilities. So drawing together the full spectrum of art and design from traditional processes to cutting edge innovative uh, innovation, we offer an unraveled environment for our students to be creative, experiment and innovate. And our award-winning VG Patel building brings all of our art design courses together offering inspiring, flexible spaces, studios, and facilities, which invite creativity. So we have state-of-the-art workshops, labs, and studios, which enable our students to experiment and test in the same way they will in industry. Well, as you can see in the slide, the open and transparent spaces in the building encourage collaboration between disciplines. And in doing so, this building supports students to be both ready for industry and future leaders in their respective field. And in this building, it's worth mentioning that we've got 34 specialist technical instructors. All of them have significant industry experience. And we've got 25 industry standard workshops, each specializing in a different process or material and our workshops are split into four zones, crafts, fashion textiles, design and arts. And we continuously uh, invest in new and replacement equipment to ensure that our facilities are always sector leading in the UK. As you will see in the next slide, as a faculty, uh, we are, of course, we have a great reputation and this is actually our PACE building. Uh, we are very proud to say that DMU is recognized as a center for excellence in performance arts by the Higher Education Funding Council of England, HAFKI. So this is the PACE building. And we offer some of the finest facilities in the sector to support your studies. And the PACE building, the campus center building, includes spacious studios and rehearsal rooms as well as large and fully equipped performance spaces. And your creative work is supported by expert technicians as well. And our studios are perfect environment to bring your creativity to life and work collaboratively with others. We have a fully equipped studio theater spaces and multidisciplinary performance space 
that is often used to support live digital work. And our dance studios are located on the top floor of the Pace Building, shown in this slide, with sprung, sprung floors, mirrors, and uh, bars. So all of our spaces can be transformed to turn your ideas into a reality, and your creative work is supported by expert technicians, and you can book rehearsal space and equipment, such as digital video cameras, sound recording equipment, and editing suites. And this next slide is about the reputation of our faculty. Because as a faculty, ADH, or the Faculty of Arts, Design and Humanities, is a UK leader for creative subjects. So for example, in terms of a fashion, and DMU has been named as one of the best fashion schools in the world in 2019 by the Business of Fashion, the internationally renowned website which assesses the world's top programs. And in terms of architecture, and the Leicester School of Architecture is one of the only five architecture schools in the world to win more than three Royal Institute of British Architects, or REBA, as can be seen in this slide, part two design awards in the past five years. And in terms of art, as mentioned earlier, the Leicester School of Art, which is uh, the origins of De Montfort University, was established in 1870. It's one of the oldest art schools in the UK. And in terms of performance, we have a number of active cultural partnerships with Curve Theatre, Leicester Comedy Festival, and the Phoenix, providing students opportunities to engage with performances, internships, and experiences. We also have in our faculty the Center for English Language Learning, which is accredited by the British Council for the quality of its teaching. And it offers free support to all our international students, not just within our faculty, but also international students across the whole university. In terms of humanities, uh, we have a world-renowned international center for sports history and culture is a world leading center of excellence for the study of sports history. And we also got a degree in sports management. In the next slide, uh, if you don't mind. Okay. So yes, all right, I can see it's coming back to the, uh, to the beginning of the slide. So in terms of reputation, I've already mentioned the different uh, um, what we have been known for. In addition to that, it's worth mentioning that our courses have obtained a range of accreditations, such as REBA, ARB, CET, as shown on, uh, in one of the slides. Yes, thank you. Yes. So that's why these uh, give uh, our students a competitive edge in the job market. And as a matter of fact, employability is embedded in every course. So our courses, especially within ADH, within the faculty, have all enjoyed excellent employability rate. So our students and graduates have been quite popular in the job market. And now I will conclude my talk with a video of the wonderful VG Patel building. So you'll be able to see what it looks like inside the building and what are the facilities like. Okay, so I will hand over to the host to play. The game.
Hi, that was amazing. I, I have to say that's one of my favorite buildings on campus, <laughs> if I may say. But thank you so much, Jiayi, for that, um, for that insight into the art and design our courses that we have to offer here at Bournemouth University. Next up, we've got Julia Poynton talking about the business and law faculty. So I'll just let her come on now. And take it away, Julie. <laughs> OK, thank you. Um, well, that was an amazing video. Um, and welcome everybody. Um, I think you're probably just about to make one of the most important decisions that you will make over the next few years. And we here at Democrat University are all here to make sure you make the right decision for you. And if you choose to come to business and law at Democrat University, you will be joining one of over 10,000 students who come from over 130 countries to study with us at De Montfort University. So you will be based in the amazing Hugh Aston building. I haven't got a video of the Hugh Aston building, but it is pretty special. And there are so many facilities there. We have some reading rooms, we have private study areas, we have computer banks. And that's in addition to the facilities that are made available in the resource center and, and the library. So we have um, a range of courses that cover all aspects of business and law. And rather than me go through each of them individually, you can find all the details on the website and you can link into every single course and, and look at its content. But what I want to share with you this afternoon are some of the things that underpin why De Montfort University Business and Law is such a special place and why you will get such a good experience. So we also have a range of accreditations from marketing institutions, accounting institutions, human resource management, and these are the professional bodies that accredit our programs so that when you come to study, you know that you are studying a course that has worldwide professional recognition and that's quite important when it comes to perhaps looking for exemptions in professional status exams in for example accounting and also because employers will be aware of the professional accreditations and that might help you secure what you all want which is a really really good job that's an interesting point and just by way of information i had a look yesterday um, ahead of this um, international stream, just to look at what some of the salaries are. And in 2021, the average salary for somebody in the UK graduating with an accounting degree um, was in banking £29,000. In accounting, it was 26000 And that was the same for management degrees and marketing degrees. Um, finance and human resource management, the average salary was 25,000 UK pounds. So that's pretty good starting salaries. And that's having studied at uh, Dewanfrey University with um, these programmes in mind. So what sort of programmes do we offer? Well, as I say, we offer a whole range of programmes. And just to list some of them, accounting and finance, but it's more than just accounting and finance because you could choose to specialize in, for example, forensic accounting, or you could specialize in something like international banking. We offer degrees, postgraduate in economics, in human resource management, and particularly popular is international relations and politics. We also have programs um, in risk management and some of the work that the research staff have been doing recently has been into the impact that COVID has had on business transactions and business sustainability. So the programme around risk management and international business and project management have been particularly relevant, I think, um, over recent times to try and understand how best to future-proof um, your organisation or an organisation that you work with against another potential pandemic and to learn from this one. We also have um, programmes that might be a little bit different, a bit sort of niche. 
So, for example, we have an MSc in air transport management and we have an MBA program, which is always incredibly popular and gives students a really good, broad understanding of business in its widest range. And that makes it a very transportable postgraduate pro uh, program into lots and lots of, of different areas. We've had students go on to work in some amazing places. We had students last year who are now working for BMW. We've had students who are now working for um, Virgin Media. We've had students working in international government, all from doing a program at Dumont University. I guess one of the questions that might be in your mind is, can I do it? Will I manage? Will I enjoy it? How will I be taught? So just to give you a bit of background, every student that comes to Dumont University will have a personal tutor. And that's somebody that you will have a special relationship with as you progress through your postgraduate study. And they will be there as a point of contact all the way through. That's in addition to the other services, for example, counselling services, welfare services, medical and healthcare services that are available to every student. You will have a study group, you will be part of a course, and that course will have a course representative. And I would urge you, when you come to DMU, find out about being that course representative, because you will then be the voice of all the students on your course, and it gives you excellent insight into how meetings are managed, how to raise concerns, how to solve problems, all of which are transportable skills when you go into employment. You will also be able to join the De Montfort Student Union. And again, that gives you access to lots of activities and events um, that will be helpful to you and enjoyable. So what will you do and how will you be taught? Well, you will be in class. Some of it may still be online um, and some of it will be face to face. You will have a range of assessments. So some people are very good at exams and we do have exams and some people prefer to do assignments individual assignments like an essay or a project report or they might want to do a me um, do a piece of group work so there's a range of assessments and that's really important to develop your skills and also give you the opportunity to excel you will have um, access to all the module leaders and at De Montfort University in the Leicester Castle Business School, we have an open door policy. So you will be able to go and talk to your module leader if you have any uncertainties or any concerns. We offer English language support and I know everybody will come with an IELTS score, but sometimes conversational English can be a little bit different to the English language that you may need to develop for business purposes. And so you will have access to two or three hours free English language support whilst you're here at De Montfort University. And you will be taught by academics who are leading academics. And I think one of the things that makes De Montfort University business and law stand out is that most of our lecturing staff are research active. And that means they will be investigating things like the impact COVID has had on business sustainability or the risk management, and they will be bringing their research into the lecture theatres and sharing that with you. Many of them have written textbooks, you can see some behind me, um, and you will be using those textbooks. We also have Blackboard, which is a, a, an online platform where everything that you need from your timetable to your module guides to your reading lists will be made available to you. So you can access that at any point anywhere in the world. So if you happen to want to go back over a lecture just to listen a little bit more or use it for revision purposes, or plan your week, all the information you need is going to be available to you on Blackboard. I could go on. Um, I, as you can probably tell, I'm quite excited. I've been at Dumont University now for 20 plus years. Um, and I have no intention of leaving. It's just such an amazing place. And I can't wait to meet you all and to welcome you to Business and Law at Timothy University. Thank you for listening. Oh, thank you so much, Julia. That was very, very insightful. We actually have a question for you uh, while I have you here. 
Um, what are the opportunities students can get in uh, with the course of uh, MSc International Business and Management? Okay, what opportunities? Thank you. One of the opportunities that is really popular is to be able to do um, a project where you will be linked with a business um, and it's designed to help you understand what a real world business issue is and you will do a piece of work with the um and it's my timer just going off so i'll just stop it um hold on That's sorry right. my 10 minute time <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yes so an opportunity to work with a business to do a piece of research um that will then form the basis of one of your assessed pieces of work um and lots of opportunities on the msc international business to participate in all things that DMU is offering. Um, so for example, collaboration with our international partners, we have a number of international partners and we like to do joint seminars, joint tutorials. So you get to learn with students from perhaps Dubai or Uzbekistan or India. And that gives you that international flavor um, and cultural understanding that is so important. So yeah, lots and lots of opportunities. <laughs> I'm on mute. I think I've said I'm on mute uh, a thousand times during this pandemic. But anyway, <laughs> thank you so much for that, Julia. We actually do have a, a not maybe of the building, a video of the building of uh, where you asked in, but we do have a business and law video that we just going to play for everyone. So yeah, it's a surprise for you as well. <laughs> so yeah, here we go. Hi, I'm Aaron and welcome to Leicester Castle Business School. This is the Hugh Aston building where you'll be taught. We have a range of lecture theatres and seminar rooms. This is an example of a seminar room. And this is the lecture theatre. This is the trading room. Students have access to financial information and can learn more about trading through self-taught courses. This is our new 5.5 million pound extension called The Yard. And it has a new student advice centre. We also have extra learning spaces and resources. Want to find out more? Visit our website for more information or come and join us on one of our upcoming open days. Amazing, thank you so much. Now we have Alex from the Computing, Engineering and Media Faculty. Before I just let you speak, Alex, I just wanted to address some of the questions. I'm hearing a lot of questions of, um, when am I gonna get my cast? When am I gonna get my unconditional offer? And I, I have been keeping an eye on those questions. So we are seeing them. Thank you so much for your inquiries. Thank you so much for engaging. And we hope that we get to everyone's questions as well. Um, even if it's after the chat, we'll definitely get back to you. Uh, regarding to everyone that still has um, outstanding, um, whether it's cast letter or unconditional offer, I would suggest you get in touch with your country manager. Uh, so you should know based on where you are, whether if, if you're in Africa, we've got the African team. If you're from um, from Europe, there's a European team. So um, we should be able to link at some point a page on our website where you can see who your representative is. They will be able to kind of communicate. Oh, we have it right there. Uh, so please do click on the following or visit the website, the web link that's, on, that's just running across the screen now and um, you, you can see who your country representative is and they'll be able to give you an update of where we're at in terms of your, in terms of the application. Same, or you can contact admissions directly if, you're, um, if you prefer it that way as well. We will also have the admissions email address just below, but it is just admissions at dmu.ac.uk. So yes. That is it for now. Uh, and I'll now let um, Alex, thank you so much. I can see it's, the admissions is there. So I'll give people two seconds to take a picture or copy and paste it, whatever you have to do. Uh, it's just admissions at dmu.ac.uk. So yeah, that is it for me. Alex, I'll let you take it away. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, hello everybody, uh, thanks for joining us. So I'm the last of the four faculties to go up. Um, over the next 10 minutes, I'm gonna give you a bit of an overview about what we offer in the Faculty of Computing, Engineering and Media. 
So the Faculty of Computing Engineering and Media are known as CHEM. So if I say CHEM throughout this, um, the next 10 minutes, I'm referring to the faculty. And we're made up of three schools. So we've got the School of Engineering and Sustainable Development, and they cover courses such as electrical and electronic engineering, mechanical engineering, energy engineering, uh, and sustainable development as well. We've got the School of Computer Science and Informatics, and they cover courses such as business information systems, uh, computer sciences, cybersecurity, computer games, uh, and intelligence systems as well. So those kind of courses. And then the third school is the Leicester Media School. And the courses under that school are such as music and audio technology, uh, animation and game art, media design production, uh, and then the me media film and journalism cluster as well. So they're the kind of courses that come under the school, um, the Faculty of Computing, Engineering and Media. Our courses, um, a lot of them are accredited by professional bodies. So we've got quite a good list of accreditations um, and industry partners as well. So we've got the British Computer Society, um, ITIL, PRINCE2, Institute of Engineering and Technology, IMECI, SIBSI, the Engineering Council and the Energy Institute. So you can see some really big um, professional bodies there accrediting some of our courses. To know exactly which courses they accredit, um, please visit our course pages where it will have the accreditation on there for you. Um, but I just wanted to kind of flag that because a lot of our courses are kind of externally accredited um, due to the kind of practical nature that's on them as well. That's really quite an important part. Um, also, student support, I think, is massive in our faculty, as it is across all of Demont University. But I just wanted to, to raise a few points here. Um, as part of our commitment to the universal design for learning, um, all of our subjects look to use kind of innovative and non-traditional methods of both teaching and learning, in addition to assessing um, you as students as well. So we have DMU Replay. And that provides the opportunity for students to revisit lectures. So in this way, students can skip to relevant parts, rewind, replay, and kind of watch it at their leisure, if you will, and you know, therefore use them as revision aids when assessment time's uh, around the corner. Um, it also reduces the need for students to actually take notes in the lectures, so therefore they can have greater participation and engagement when they are actually in the lectures in their live format. So that works, re works really well. We have online marking as well. So that means that students can access their grades and their comments electronically and um, speeds it up as well. So it's a lot quicker to get that feedback and um, the ability to download as PDF kind of manipulate that document for easy viewing um, is really, really accessible for everybody. Makes it really transparent as well with regards to kind of where you can improve what the comments are um, and exactly which parts um, your academics are referring to. On the student support side, we have um, fantastic technical teams in the Faculty of Computing, Engineering and Media, uh, and they're available, available for you from the first year. So as soon as you start, um, they are available and they enhance your university experience and support you through all of your studies. And um, some of our technicians provide special kind of one to one tutoring and mentoring, as well as drop in sessions for students that need extra support. So I really encourage um, you to take use of our technical staff because they are absolutely fantastic. We also have the Centre for Learning and Study Support, which provides help and support for students with their studies throughout. And that's based in the Kimberlin Library. So do check that out. Um, it's delivered in a number of ways, including kind of study support tutorials, uh, online publications, and then there's writing development advice uh, and all sorts. So it's really easy to find exactly what it is you're looking for on that support side. Um, also, each faculty has its own student advice centre. So you may have seen in um, the business and law video that um, they took you in that video to their student advice centre. Each faculty has one of those. So do check that out um, and support and advise students with, with all learning support inquiries. And that's things such as kind of coursework, handling and collection, how, how you go through those processes, contact details for lecturers that you may need. And um, the student advice centre is, is key basically for all these kind of central parts that you may need throughout your study time. Um, also kind of examining coursework deferral forms and advice. So anything that um, you may need support within that area, the Student Advice Centre are great for that as well. And they can offer one-to-one -one appointments as well, should your problem be um, a private or confidential nature. So fundamentally, there's just a whole mass of student support available within the faculty uh, and at, at De Montfort University wider as well. Um, we also have kind of dedicated resources to extra academic support. Um, so there's things like essay writing and uh, general written English, their grammar and punctuation, learning, research skills and sources. So obviously that's um, quite a topical one for, for the faculty because we have a lot of research, which I'm going to discuss in a second. Um, but then also kind of transferable skills, so presentation skills, time management skills, and then how to revise and prepare for exams as well. So a whole raft of support available for you um, at the university. 
I said I was going to touch on research, and I think that's really important in the Faculty of Computing, Engineering and Media. And I just wanted to flag a, a few aspects and some of our boasts with regard to research. So in the in the latest research excellence framework, um, computer science and informatics research at De Montfort University was ranked third among modern UK universities for research power. Um, architecture, the built environment and planning, which includes a little bit of energy and sustainable development in the School of Engineering and Sustainable Development, um, was ranked second among modern UK universities in terms of overall quality of its research. And then finally, um, to cover the media school, the Communication, Cultural and Media Studies um, was ranked first in the UK for the proportion of its research outputs rated as world leading. Um, and that's four stars. And I wanted to just mention that because that covers the three schools that we have within the faculty. Um, but actually, our, our courses are directly impacted by the research. So research is, goes into the teaching that we have on our platform. So that, you know, enables you to learn information really at the cutting edge of the field that you're you're interested in that you're studying in so i just wanted to to highlight that and you know there's some great accolades for us in the faculty there as well i was going to touch on dmu works but i'm aware that manax is here and she knows much more than i um but i just wanted to touch on it with regards to the opportunities that that does um pose for students within our faculty and um, we've had some students go on to do some really really incredible things but i will let manax boast about dmu works because it's it's a really fantastic um opportunity for all of our students um, and I just wanted to touch at the end a bit about your future. I think obviously deciding a university is, is literally an investment in your future. Um, and for me, it's about kind of growth and that's both academically and professionally. And I feel like our uh, faculty is a really great place to foster that. Uh, and we, f we foster your interests and encourage you to seek out new experiences as well. There's so many of those available within our faculty. Um, and, you know, I really encourage you to take, take that. There's lots of clubs and societies. I'll, I'll list a few in a second. Um, for you to really take advantage of and cement some of the things that you may learn um, in the classroom and in labs, uh, be able to take them into um, kind of extracurricular activities as well. Um, and we really prioritise academic excellence to give you leading edge knowledge and experience. And as I say, you mentioned uh, previously about the research filtering into that. Um, and the opportunities at DMU present our students with a wide range of choices to enhance your employability. And I think that's kind of fundamental. Um, like I said, students have opportunities to enter competitions and um, they have flexibility to choose certain modules and work on projects that interest them most as well across a whole range of our courses. So um, that's always useful because you can really focus on on what's important to you and what kind of pulls in on your interests. So it makes the course more enjoyable. Um, and we've got examples of kind of competitions and, and clubs that you can join, such as DMU Racing, the Electronics Club, the Hackathon, Game City uh, and the Star Pack Awards as well. So I really encourage you to, to check out those. Um, and how they can help you with your studies as well as um, having a bit of fun on the side. Also our facilities, um, we have fantastic facilities in um, the Faculty of Computing, Engineering and Media. And we do have a little video um, just to give you a little sneak preview, uh, very small. But for the rest of that um, facility information, please do check the, the web pages um, because there's lots of facility content on there as well. Um, so yeah, I'll introduce the video now, if you would. I'm Zane. I study cybersecurity and I'm in my second year here at DMU. Here we are in the cybersecurity center where we have multiple labs with highly specialized pieces of software, including things like FTK, FTK Imager, and Autopsy. These are just examples of software used for Windows forensics, but we also do things like pen testing here as well. This is one of the computer labs. If you're looking to study one of the many computing courses here at DMU like I am, you could use these labs for study sessions, catching up on work, and even a few workshops. Great, thank you. And that's that's kind of it for me. If you have any questions in the chat, um, please do put them in there. I'll do my best to get back to you. Thank you so much, Alex. That was very, very insightful. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people found that useful, especially those that are interested in computing, uh, media or engineering. Uh, now, next, uh, you kind of touched on it, but we've got Minaxi, uh, who's going to be telling us about employability. I know a lot of people are always asking, I know there has been some questions on employability, the opportunities that, that you have there. So, Minaxi, I'll let you take over now. 
Brilliant. Thank you so much, Flo. Um, so I just wanted to introduce DMU Works. So what is DMU Works? So we're basically an, an award-winning uh, best university careers and employability team. Um, and we have over 70 staff here to support you um, who are you know, qualified careers advisors, uh, placement teams within the faculty to really support you in your career journey whilst you're studying here at DMU. So we really value that. Um, and today what I'm going to go through is just some seven key services which I think is going to be really useful for you to know about uh, that we offer and those are one-to-one -one advice and support, uh, business startup and entrepreneurship support, uh, employer events that we put on that you can get involved in, employer mentoring, graduate and part-time jobs um, and placements that you can get involved in, online learning and DMU for life. So I'll touch upon those very briefly. So what support is available to students? So like I said, um, firstly, we, we really value ourselves on the support that we provide to students. And, you know, one-to-one -one career support appointments are really important. They're unlimited. All you have to do is book online via our uh, portal, which is called My Gateway. Uh, when you come to DMU and you've got access to an array of appointments um, throughout the week um, to support you. And those appointments are really there to support you to provide tailored advice and guidance when it comes to your career choices, whether you have questions around you know, career change or whether you want support with an application form. Uh, you might be coming up to uh, an interview maybe for a graduate job role, or there may be a part-time job that you're looking for and you need to put in an application. So the careers appointment will cover a range of topics. So you're more than welcome to book that and get one-to-one -one advice with regards to that as well. We also hold group sessions as well. So we have workshops that you can get involved in. Um, and I would highly encourage once you do get here to start looking at that as a starting point. So absolutely fantastic. Like I said, tailored support available just for you. If you're interested in, let's say, business startups, so let's say, for example, alongside your studies, um, you, you've got, you know, entrepreneurship, um, you know, skills in you and you're thinking, you know, I really want to explore um, how to start up a business, then we've got a dedicated enterprise team and they offer starter to advice, um, support to start your own business. They hold many events and networking sessions, so they'll put you in touch with other, um, you know, budding entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs within, um, you know, Leicester, Leicestershire, and even nationally. So really good opportunity for you to get involved in that if that's something what you want to do. And they have plenty of competitions and these are open to all students. So that's really important to get engaged with as well. Uh, thirdly, we have employer events. So the DMU Works team uh, prides itself actually on putting some real brilliant events, employer events, which is an opportunity for you to engage and network with employers that are, you know, hopefully ready to take you on, um, you know, when you graduate from, from DMU. So these could involve things like our annual careers and employability fair. So this is normally a graduate and placement fair. We have nearly just about 100 or just over 100 um, employers attend this and they are very keen to speak to our students. So I would always encourage everyone to come along to the uh, careers and employability fair uh, and see what, what employers are offering, find out more information. And we've had employers such as IBM, Rolls-Royce, ASOS, um, Virgin Media examples. So plenty and plenty of employers available for you to kind of network in and get in touch with. And actually around uh, between 20, 2020 and 2021, um, we still put on um, an array of virtual events. We had around about 780 careers events. So these are the kind of levels of um, you know, events that we're putting on for, your, for our students. Number four, we've got employability mentoring. So if you're coming along to DMU and you're thinking, I really want to get a bit more of an insight into what does industry actually look like? You know, who can I speak to? Then we've got a brilliant employability mentoring scheme, uh, which is headed up by some fantastic staff. And you get an opportunity to be mentored by professionals and they can either be DMU alumni. There may be people that have done uh, the same course that you're doing that are now in industry or they could be from um, elsewhere, but they're ready to support you and provide you 
uh, you know, advice, um, share their experiences in industry, and hopefully you can gain, you know, a positive relationship out of that as well. Number five, so we advertise plenty of part-time jobs, internships, placements, graduate jobs, all on our jobs portal called My Gateway. Uh, if you're considering coming, obviously, to the UK, to D DMU, then you may be wondering that you want to maybe support yourself by getting a part-time job. We actually have a fantastic um, on-site recruitment agency called Unitemps. Um, and this team um, offers part-time, temporary, summer jobs available for you to, to apply for. All you need to do is just click on unitemps.com, select the Dimotford University branch, and you can start applying for jobs that are advertised on there. Uh, previously, some of our students that have um, you know, signed up with Unitemps have gone on to work with um, clubs such as Leicester City Football Club uh, as ambassadors, or they've been had the opportunity to work um, as interpreters with the NHS here in the UK. Or if you've got language skills, then you could potentially become an interpreter. So lots of opportunities for you to get involved in in terms of part time jobs alongside your studies here as well. Some of your courses um, may, and, and it's already been mentioned actually, that some of the courses available to postgraduate students, you may be able to do an optional placement. So this could be a one-year placement, or you could do an embedded uh, piece of work experience, or you may have some projects that you can work on. Now, we advertise all of these on my gateway as well, and you can actually get some tailored advice from the dedicated placement teams within the faculties, um, or you can actually get support from your um, academics, depending on what your course offers in terms of placements uh, or internships. But I would always check if your um, you know, course will offer you that. Um, and if it does, then you do have a dedicated placement team in each of the faculties to help you with that as well. And in terms of graduate jobs, so you know, it's really important that, you know, when you are coming to DMU, we really do value the fact that we want our students to be ready for the world of work. And you can see that in the courses, they're really preparing you for that. Uh, and what we do as DMU Works, we network and we you know, liaise with the employers to see what opportunities are available and we'll put you in touch with those employers. So that's by advertising hundreds of opportunities on my gateway. It could be bringing employers to employability networking events to put you in touch with them. So there's a whole range of um, opportunities that you can get in, you know, in touch with and, and apply for. So really brilliant um, to get involved in those as well and apply. Now, whilst you are studying at DMU, not only do we have our DMU Works team where you can book appointments, but we actually have a 24 seven online digital offer. Uh, quite recently, you actually won an award um, for that, for our digital offer. And what that means is you can access a whole range of um, information uh, re related to careers and employability on our platform called the DMU Works Skills Hub. So you've got an opportunity if you wanted to, to get your CV reviewed on our platform called CV360. Um, so you can, you know, start at DMU, you can maybe put your CV or your resume, as you might know it, into the system. And this system, this piece of software will actually give you a score at the end of it. Quite quick, will give you some great feedback in terms of what you need to do to improve on your CV or your resume. And then you can by all means, book an appointment with one of the team to kind of go through it in a bit more in depth as well. There's also a career readiness self-assessment tool. Um, so if you're studying, you're studying your course, but you're not quite sure maybe what options you want to do for your future career, you know, you've got an opportunity here to, you know, kind of answer some questions online. And hopefully this will give you a bit of feedback as well. You can practice video interviews on here as well. So many of our um, graduate employers, part of their assessment process for a job interview is that you may be required to do a video interview. And we've actually got a, a simulator where you can practice video interviews and again, get some feedback on that as well. Uh, so like I said, there's a whole range of things online that can also be offered to you that you can access at any time during your time here at DMU as well. And, you know, lastly, I just wanted to let you know, this is really important. I think um, the real great factor about DMU and the, our 
our service, DMU Work Services, it's here for life. So even after you finish your studies and you graduate, you can still access the DMU Work Service um, for however long you need it. So if you want to make a one-to-one -one appointment again um, to discuss your career prospects or your opportunities, then you're more than welcome to do that. There is no limit to that. You can still access some of the events that will take place, like the Graduate and Placement Careers Fair that happens every year. And you can access still plenty of opportunities that are advertised uh, for you as well. Um, also, the DMU for Life um, and the alumni group also offer uh, an online platform where you can actually get in touch with DMU alumni from your home countries or in other countries if that's where you you know if you're thinking of going to another country to settle or if you'd like to see who else is um, you know who else has done the same course as you and what are they doing now you can actually join some of these alumni networks and they're fantastic um, and all the DMU alumni you know are ready to support you and they've pledged that they're ready to support our students so it's fantastic platform for you to get involved in as well. So you might also be thinking, you know, what are your options in terms of, you know, working in the UK after graduation and what kind of support will DMU Works offer? So our international students also gain specialist workshops uh, and sessions, which will tell you a little bit more about the UK labour market. Um, we've got specialist uh, platforms such as Student Circus and Going Global. Um, and these are really good resources and opportunities for you to kind of get some information um, and signpost you in the right direction after graduation as well. Uh, and we have dedicated teams within DMU who can also provide you um, advice and guidance on your visa support as well. So just to wrap it up, I'm just going to see if we can have our DMU uh, Works video up. So just thank you so much. And if you have got any questions, I'm happy to answer those for you. OK, so I can see there's a, a question that has come through, um, which is around the scope of project management career um, options post your uh, master's study. So, yeah, there's plenty of opportunities. I mean, all I would say at this stage is just ensure that you get as much information uh, from your career service within the faculty. So we've got dedicated careers um, uh, teams and faculty placement teams that can support you and give you advice and guidance. Um, and a lot of the skills that you're going to be developing on your course. So for example, doesn't matter what course you're studying, whichever faculty, you're going to develop transferable skills. So these are skills that you can take from one role to another. So things like being organized, you know, communication skills, um, being able to work to tight deadlines. These are all skills that you can take from, you know, from a variety of roles to another job. Um, so therefore, please, please do make sure that you speak to your dedicated teams and we can support you with that. And we've got plenty of resources available uh, online that can also provide you information on how you can get into these types of roles as well. Hopefully that's answered your question, Kiran. OK, so another question. So can you work in the UK uh, whilst you're studying on a postgraduate course? Yes, absolutely. So if you are studying, um, I would say what you need to do is just check your uh, visa status. But majority of the times, students who are studying on a postgraduate course 
can work 20 hours per week um, during term time. Um, obviously, when you are non-term time, then you can potentially work full-time hours. Uh, so just check in terms of your schedule uh, of your course, just check when is term time and when is non-term uh, non time, and then you can work hours according to that. But I would always check uh, your visa and what the status of that is as well. Okay, so another question, what is the graduate route or post-study visa? So yeah, there's um, maybe quite a few questions around this. So the, the graduate route or post-study visa, what it enables you to do now is it enables you to work um, two years after graduation in the UK um, in a role, any role that you, you would like. So it enables you to stay on and be able to, um, you know, give you time to secure a graduate position or you could do some part-time work whilst you're obviously looking for your uh, graduate position as well. So again, I would uh, make sure that you, you know, make sure that you check the details of that on the UKISA website. There is a link and uh, we may be able to put that in the chat for you, uh, for you to make sure that you get all the up-to-date information um, on there but I would also recommend you know if you are intending on staying in the UK after your graduation that's fantastic but again make sure that you're using the DMU life um, services to help you get that graduate job that you're really here for. And oh, another question. So what advice would you give to an international student who wants to gain work experience in the UK? So I think some some very basic top tips, I would say, you know, when you do arrive in the UK and you start your course, I would highly recommend you to get engaged in as many things as you can as possible on campus. So what I'm talking about is things like the DSU. So the De Montfort Student Union is a fantastic place. It's where you can get involved in various societies um, and it's a great way to meet fellow DMU students. It's a great way to build your network, expand um, you know, your network and meet different people um, and also kind of develop on your, you know, communication skills and also be able to gain that confidence. You know, it's really important to do that. So get involved in whatever societies. We've got so many. I mean, there's so many interest groups that you can get involved in. But also from an employability point of view, when you go to interviews uh, for graduate jobs, they don't just want to employ you just for your technical skills or the things that you've learned on your course. It's also about you as a person. And if you can show that you've got involved in all these different areas of the university, you're going to have some fantastic talking points there as well. The other thing I would uh, definitely recommend when you do get here is, again, make sure you use the online resources as a starting point. You know, get your CV reviewed or your resume reviewed uh, via CV360. It will be a really good um, eye opener in terms of what things you need to do to change your CV to make it to um, the format that you need in the UK. So would really recommend those are the top two things you do. And then finally, you know, to make sure you engage with the DMU Work Service because we host so many different events, opportunities. All you need to do is just, just ask and get involved. OK, so another question here. So does DMU Works help with aviation field um, as well after completing MSc Air Transport Management? Um, so quite a specific question, I'd say, for uh, the business and law faculty. Um, as far as I'm aware, the DMU Works team will support you along the way. So if you've got a particular query or a question, you've got a dedicated team within the faculty, the business and law careers team, um, who will be able to support you with any of your queries. Um, they can look into you know, your career plan on a one to one basis. So I would definitely um, get support you know, from that team. At the same time, like I mentioned, there are so many different job opportunities um, that are available that are advertised on my gateway. So I would highly recommend that you engage with that platform um, as well as looking out for any graduate events that are coming up. So there are many courses also that will be you know, introducing employers into the curriculum. Um, so always make, make the most of that opportunity. And, and again, like I said, build on your network, keep a good relationship with the people that you meet. Okay. 
Great. Thank you so much, Minaxi. I think you've covered um, a lot of ground there. I think that was very, very insightful for um, most of our viewers, most of our students. Um, we now, um, if I'm not, I think we'll do, we've got a question, if I'm not mistaken, about uh, January, uh, January courses or deferring. And I'll let just, I'll just let Jonathan um, answer that question for us. Oh, um, so yeah, uh, essentially, obviously, we totally appreciate the, the crazy way of the world at the moment, and in particular, obviously, being last we've got close affinity to India, and uh, really do um, really do appreciate all of the issues that are happening. Uh, what we've done over the past th three, four weeks in every faculty is to look at all of the courses that we can enable online learning for the first term. So there will be, this has been possible with the vast majority of courses, but unfortunately not all of them down to some lab resources, down to some requirements. So essentially in the next week or so, you'll be receiving information on when you have to arrive for your start date. It may be September, it may not be till January, and it may not even be till April on some of the more flexible courses. So I can address the advanced biomedical one that's within my faculty and say that you won't be required to actually attend the MU in person until January. That's very similar with the vast majority of postgraduate courses. However, you will be receiving information from the MU in the next week or two, hopefully, possibly sooner. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jonathan, um, for answering that question. That was, um, I think we've got a few inquiries on that one. Uh, next, I think I'll just be uh, due to time. I won't, um, I won't go too much into detail about the last thing that we wanted to talk about, just life generally in um, a, a DMU. So the first thing that we get a lot of questions on is accommodation. So in terms of accommodation, the first thing um, that I wanted to address is that you can quarantine in your accommodation should you be required to. Let's say you're flying from a high-risk country or you're required by the UK guidelines to do so, you can quarantine um, in your accommodation. And further details and, and guidelines are updated on your on our your DMU Future webpage, which you should just see and uh, just see on the screen there. So please keep an eye on that webpage because we're, we we have more live updates. Uh, as you know, the situation keeps changing, so it's good to just keep your to just keep an eye on that because um, we have had a lot of questions surrounding uh, the current situation, uh, traveling from red zone countries and that and that type of thing. Um, now, in terms of the accommodation, we do have accommodation on campus, beautiful accommodation. We've got over 10 halls of residence, uh, di di different accommodations depending on your preference, depending on your lifestyle, depending on your budget. So our accommodation ranges from about £99 to about £185 a week. So you, you could look, be looking at an average of uh, £400 a month for rent or £450 a month for rent, which by UK standards is very, very affordable. And uh, the best thing about our accommodation is how central it is, how close it is to everything else. So we're literally right in the middle of, of a city, meaning you can get to the town centre within a few minutes walk. You can get to the train station within a few minutes walk. You're not really having to take a transport to get anywhere within the city, in most places within the city, because we're very, very central uh, to the town centre. We're in the town centre, I would say. Um, even so that's the best thing that means that you can socialize you're close to the campus you can get around easily everything you want is also within the campus so it, it's a really nice location uh, where we have our accommodation it's all self-catered so it gives you you know the freedom to come and go as you please uh, to eat what you want to cook for yourself um, it's furnished all views are included so, um, yeah, you won't really have to um, worry about accommodation much. Uh, and the best thing about the accommodation is also that um, every international student in their first year is guaranteed accommodation. So that's something that, you know, you have that peace of mind. I know a lot of you are worried, especially with uh, the class delays and everything else, that, oh, will I be able to get accommodation? And the, the answer to that is, yes, every international student is guaranteed accommodation in their first year of studies as well. 
Uh, now, in terms of Leicester generally, uh, what life in Leicester is like? Well, first of all, Leicester is, is a great location for international students. It's literally, we're in the East Midlands, which means we're quite literally in the middle of England. So we can get to all the major cities quite easily. So we're neighbors with uh, Nottingham and Birmingham. They're about 35, 40 minutes away from us. We're only an hour away by train to London. So that's also very convenient, having London just next door like that. And Leicester itself is a city. You might not even have to go to all those other cities because it's it's a large city. It's vibrant. It's multicultural. There's restaurants, society. This is not no society. Societies are within the university, but there's restaurants, there's bars, a lot of social things that you can get involved in. And um, it's also good. I, I like that it's a mixture of uh, being a town, but you've also got your quiet green spaces as well or remote areas as well so it's like a little bit of uh, it's like the best of both worlds uh, i would say um and I, I i personally i think a lot of international students feel very welcome when coming to when coming to leicester because of how diverse how diverse and multicultural uh, it is and that you um you will never not have anything to do in Leicester. There's so much that you can, you know, depending on what you prefer doing, what you enjoy doing, there's always going to be something to do. Um, now, the other thing that I think I wanted to talk about was the International Welcome Week. So that's actually uh, meant to start, or it's starting at 20th of September. So it's that week of uh, 20th of September. There's going to be both online and in-person provision. So that means you can still access all the key information and sessions if you've not yet traveled from your home country due to the many restrictions that we have at the moment. Um, or let's say you do, you you need to have to, to be in quarantine around that time. Uh, so we will have all the key information available online and and face to face as well. If you're on campus, even better. That means you can attend some of the face to face activities that we have, like the tours, um, a lot of other things like day trips, bowling, uh, just a range of things um, that that we have to offer during that International Welcome Week. Um, I'm not expecting you to be making notes of all this. We have all this information on our international welcome week page. Um, so I think that's just going to be uh, put at the bottom, if I'm not mistaken. And that would also be on your cast letter. So as soon as you receive your cast letter, it's going to have all this information about the International Welcome Week as well. So you don't have to worry about whether you're going to miss something or not. There is going to be a schedule that will, schedule that will be given to you to, um, closer to the time that you have to, to be with us. Um, and now in terms of arriving to the UK, we just ask that you know, you're know you aware of all the UK government rules and travel restrictions in terms of COVID-19. So we do have um, a, a page that we uh, will be, you know, we advise you to keep an eye on as well, uh, just to kind of keep up to date with uh, with the regulations and laws surrounding, um, surrounding the current pandemic restrictions and uh, quarantining and all that other stuff. Um, we also have, um, we normally have uh, airport pickups. So for those people that are arriving uh, just before the International Welcome Week, we do have airport pickups from uh, from Heathrow Airport or Birmingham Airport. So we will have, um, closer to the time again, we will be sending an email out to allow you to book, um, you know, so that you know when to book your flight for, so that you can book it in time for you to get the, the 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 um the airport pickup but if we don't um if you don't make it for the airport pickup let's say you're arriving a little later they still like I said Leicester is very easy to get to it's very easy to to travel to and fro Leicester so we do also advise you on the kind of transportation that you can take which there is a lot uh, there's a coach there's taxes or there's trains uh, there's a lot of ways that you can get to Leicester and we're happy to provide you with this information um as well. I'm just trying to check that I've uh, spoken about everything. Uh, oh, the main thing <laughs> that a lot of students want to apply. You've heard all these amazing things about um, about Leicester. Now, a lot of you might be wondering, how do I actually apply? Um, now, I, I am aware that a lot of you have already applied and you're waiting for your past letters and everything else, which are no admissions are quickly working through right now. Uh, but for those that haven't applied and are interested in, uh, in applying, 
Um, there are a few number of important steps that I would just uh, that I would just mention um, so that you know you're kind of like aware of what to expect throughout the, the application process. So the first step will be to download and complete our international application form. So this will be on our website, which is just below there. Um, once you fill out the application form, you prepare your documentation that we that we request which is, you know, your qualifications, your certificates. The specific qualifications would depend on the course or level that you're applying for, which is all on our website as well. Uh, we also expect an English language certificate. That's just proof of English. So any equivalent of a GCSE, English, grade C and above. Um, the most popular test that we, that we accept is IELTS. Uh, which I'm sure most of you are aware, are aware of. There's also a range of other English tests that, that we also accept. Uh, that's, I would also advise contacting your country manager to just say, I'm from this region, I'm from this country, I have this English qualification, am I exempt? Um, if you are, they'll let you know. If not, there's a lot of other options that we can offer you. We've got our own version of an IELTS called uh, the De Montfort Academic Test of English. So we just call it DATE. Uh, in short, uh, it's free of charge, and it's just it's um, it's pretty much just like an IELTS. Uh, we grade it in the same way. Uh, the only good thing is that it's free. We're conducting it ourselves. It can only grant you access to DMU, not any other uni. I'm afraid. Um, and also, it happens across a couple of days, a few hours each days. Uh, so just in this very similar format of, of an IELTS, and to to be able to get this test booked in. All you need um, is to have, you need to have a conditional offer. You need to have been accepted to study with us. And then you just send us your, your details and we'll book that test in for you. That's if you don't meet the end, you don't have the English language certificate. Uh, the other thing that we ask for, the other documentation that we need is, uh, is a personal statement, or as I call it, a passion statement or uh, whatever. There's so many ways uh, that people call it. That's when you're just explaining, you know, why you want to study at DMU, why you want to study that particular course, how that's going to help you in your future career. So they just want to see all the academics that I've spoken to you um, earlier. They kind of want to see that you're right for the course, that you are passionate about the course and that you are interested, most importantly, in the course. Uh, so that's what that personal statement is for. Uh, you also need to send a copy of your uh, passport and uh, one reference letter for undergraduate study and two reference letters uh, for uh, postgraduate studies. Now, it's important, uh, an important um, something to put on the side. In terms of references, we understand that it's been very difficult for, for students to kind of attain references with school closures and, and all the local uh, schools and university closures around the world. So that has been waived for this intake. Uh, we now, I think, are only requiring one reference. Um, if you don't have any reference, just get in touch with your representative as well, and they, they should be able to help you. Um, so yeah, that's just available for this intake, um, applicable for this intake. Um, yeah, and then if you're doing an art and design course, um, for example, architecture, fashion design, graphic design, whatever it is, you might need to um, not might you will need a portfolio. Uh, with pieces of work that you know that you've done and there's more information as well on um, kind of like what is expected in that in that portfolio and that is pretty much all the the documents that you need to gather with the application form you send it to admissions so that's um, admissions at dmu.ac.uk so you say hi I'm applying for the September 2021 intake please could you process my application and that's it that's the easiest way to apply some people apply through representatives uh, like agents for example uh, that's also another way of applying some people can apply through the portal through UCAS um, that's also another way you can apply so there's a range of ways that you can apply but i think this is the the most popular way uh, to to submit your applications to admissions and uh, in terms of once you apply now um you either get a conditional offer so a conditional offer means that you still need to submit uh, some outstanding documentation so that means that your place is reserved until you meet the rest of your entry criteria so for example let's say you've met everything but you don't have the english qualification They'll give you an, an, a conditional offer and say that we've reserved your place. 
till you get your English qualification, then we give you an unconditional offer. Um, and then we also have um, an unconditional, or you could get an unconditional offer, meaning that you've submitted everything we want to see um, and you can move on to the next step. Um, the other option would be, the other outcome would be they give you an alternative course. So let's say you haven't quite met the, the entry requirements for the particular course. They can suggest an alternative course where you actually do meet the entry requirements or that's best suited uh, to your qualifications and, and you know, the, the grades that you have received. Or in worst case scenario, the application will be rejected. That's if let's say you haven't met um, any of the entry requirements and um, there's just no other option for you. Uh, but I'm sure that won't be happening, hopefully. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that's pretty much what to expect when you apply. And of course, after you've got your unconditional offer, you then go on to pay uh, your deposit. Um, if you're from certain countries, you might have to do a credibility interview. And after then, you then receive your cast letter and then you apply for your visa. I'm seeing a lot of questions of how long does it take to process um, the, the cast letter. It varies. It should take from the moment you've, you know, you've, you've requested, it should take a couple of weeks. And if it's more than that, definitely get in, get in touch with your country representative or directly to admissions and just say, I, I still haven't received my cast. Can I please have an update? And that is pretty much um, the process in terms of um, how to apply. Uh, if I have missed anything or there's anything else that you do want to know, uh, please put it in the comment box. We have about uh, eight minutes <laughs> to uh, play around with some questions. So uh, please uh, do ask any questions. I think it's now um, Q&A time. So I can't do it by myself. So I'm going to ask help from everyone, all the academics and everyone that was here today to kind of um, just help me with some of the questions that we have from um, from our lovely guests. I just want to thank you all for your questions. You've been very interactive. Um, you've I, I'm, I'm hoping you have uh, enjoyed uh, this, um, this session. And so, yeah. Uh, you can bring on the questions and we'll try and uh, see if we can get through as many as we can. If not, not to worry, we'll still get back to you um, afterwards. You can just get in touch with us uh, and we'll be able to get back to you. I'll just put an email uh, where you can get back to us. Okay. Question one from Daniel. Uh, do you recommend a one-way or round uh, trip plane ticket? Oh, that's, that's an interesting question. <laughs> I, I don't think I've heard that one before, but I think personally, I would recommend a one way, maybe, because if I was me, I wouldn't be, you know, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be going. Most, stu most international students, when they come, they're not going back home anytime soon, at least not in the, not in the first six months or whatever it may be, as they settle into the university. Uh, but some students, let's say you're starting in September and you want to go back home for the Christmas holidays, then maybe, but I think for visa purposes, most students just get a one-way ticket. I think that's the that's the best way to to go about it. Just your one-way ticket, I would say. I don't know if anyone else wants to add anything or <laughs> no. Okay, all right. Next question. Hi Florence, how many days does it take for uh, the CAS statement post credibility interview? So it shouldn't. It should take about two weeks, hopefully less. Uh, it's, if it's taking more than that, I, I know I'm really sorry for the delays. Admissions are going through their busiest period, so I know that they're working very fast to get the CAS letters to everyone. So if it has been more than two weeks, definitely get in touch with admissions directly. Or your country representative, and they'll be able to um, they'll be able to kind of um, give you an update or try and get admissions to get that process for you a, a little bit more quickly. I hope that answers your question, Kieran. Thank you. What will my teaching and learning experience be like for the next academic year? I think I'll leave this to one of the academics. They'll probably be better at answering this than me. Anyone wants to, anyone who wants to take on this question? Oh, Julie, I think you're speaking, but I think you're on mute. Okay. Okay. Um, happy, happy, to have, happy to have a go. Um, it will probably be a mixture of online delivery and face-to-face -face delivery. So 
the smaller group work um, seminars will be face to face. Um, some of the larger lectures will probably be still delivered online. Um, but there will be much more interaction now the COVID situation is, is getting better, much better. Um, and it changes so quickly that it's, it's really hard to predict what it's going to be like in September. So the most important thing is to come with an open mind, keep an open mind, be flexible, be adaptable and keep in touch because there will be lots of information being shared about what your timetable will be and where you will be expected to attend in person and where you will be able to access the teaching and learning online. So I think as we've all had a really strange 18 months, um, things are getting back to normal here in the UK, but I think it's going to be a, a little bit of a slower process. Um, so I think my biggest hint and tip would be be flexible and enjoy the experience. I love that. I love that. Thank you so much, Julia. Uh, for fine arts, uh, so you already know who I'm coming to for this one. <laughs> um, the question is for fine arts MA program, when will the course details be available? Yeah, yeah I'll leave yeah. that one to you. Thank you, Flo. Thank you, Mara, for the question. Um, there are two aspects of the question you've asked, Mara. The first one, if you are asking about the modules, and assessment and things like that. And the latest information is always available on the website. And if you just Google DMU Fine Art MA, you'll be able to see all the up-to-date information. And if you are asking about the details in relation to the format of teaching and learning, like the previous question, I must say that, of course, we're adopting a similar approach, just like what Julia has explained, is going to be a hybrid approach and the information will be communicated to you uh, on a regular basis by your program leader, if you're already an offer holder. And you will receive, I believe you will receive uh, emails uh, from us in relation to what your teaching and learning experience looks like in September and what your, te what your teaching timetable will look like in September, if that's what you're asking. I hope this will answer your question. But again, I, was, I just want to add one more point uh, in relation to the comparison uh, to last year. For the next academic year, even though some of the bigger uh, lectures, they will be online, but they will be interactive and also they will be recorded. So you will be able to watch the replay uh, if you want to review it later. So there will be more learning and teaching materials available to you. So be assured that uh, we're always here to support you and you will be able to enjoy a wide range of different approaches to learning and teaching. Yeah, thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you. I hope that answers your question, Mara. Uh, do we have any other questions? Or I think this will probably be our, our last question. I'm not sure, maybe a couple more. Um, for January 2022 intake, when will admission uh, be on? Actually, I think I can um, I can answer this one. So if you're interested in January 2022 intake, it definitely doesn't hurt to, to apply now. If you're prepared, if you've got all your documentation, all your, um, all your, your qualifications that are required, uh, it absolutely doesn't hurt uh, to start applying now. It is open. Um, when we get most applications, I say we, st we get the most of our applications for January around November when the September intake is kind of cleared. That's when we do get most of the applications. But most students start applying as soon as now. So, yeah, I hope that answers your question. I think one more. Okay. Uh, what is my job prospect as a postgraduate after... Uh, after graduation, I'll leave this one to DM UX. I think you're best suited for this uh, for this question. Sure, brilliant. No worries. So, I mean, in terms of job prospects, they're absolutely fantastic in the sense that, you know, like I've said before, we really do encourage you when you do come to DMU to actually engage in the DMU work services because we can really ensure that we can put you in touch, uh, you know, with relevant employers, you know, that are within your course. Um, I would say make the most of all the services that are available. Um, it, it's whatever you make out 
um, you know, at the end of the day, whatever the experience that you want it to be. So the job prospects are there. Um, in fact, you know, I I've had lots of questions uh, throughout the year around, you know, how has the pandemic affected um, jobs? But actually, in reality, the graduate job market has been has been still great and, and very prominent. So really important that you engage with your studies. Firstly, that's the most important thing. And alongside that, um, in, engage with the DMU Works team and the different services that we've got, because that is what's going to help you to progress and, and really figure out what you want to do, um, you know, once you graduate and start preparing for that earlier. So, yep, the job prospects are there. Uh, just engage with the team and, and, your, and your studies, uh, importantly, as well. That's great. Thank you so much. Thank you. And um, happiness, I hope that's such a nice name. I hope that answers your question. Um, OK, we'll do just one more, one more bonus question, and then um, that should be it for questions. I don't know if we have one more to answer. Or one more question. Okay, can we arrive earlier in September to the accommodation? So this this completely depends um, on the accommodation that you've gotten. They will have um, they will have start dates. So most start dates are, if I'm not mistaken, going to be from second week of, of September. But like I said, it depends with the holes that you've applied for. So that all the all the details of when the start dates are are all on our accommodation page. So I'd say just, just have a look, but you can definitely start before you, you know, before you know everything starts, because we are aware that you do need to quarantine, that you do need to be available for the uh, for the, um, the the welcome week. So yeah, it depends with the kind of accommodation that you're trying to get um, to get it. So we, we've come to the end of our questions, and I'm sure there's some questions that we didn't get to, and I sincerely apologize for that. I wish we had more time, and I wish I could keep these guys for longer, um, but I think I've kept them for, way, for, for long enough for now, <laughs> but maybe we could always have another session. But for any questions, if you have any questions that have gone unanswered, or you do think of any other questions, we are still available. We are still here to answer those questions. Just email us um, at the international office. The email address should just be below. I think it's askinternational, ask.international at dmu.ac.uk. Uh, ask us any questions that you have, and we'll be happy to help you. If we can't, at least we'll know the direction which to point you to, but we'll definitely be happy to assist you. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I can see a lot of people waiting for their cast letters, meaning you'll all be joining us this September or October. We are excited to have you. Thank you for joining this live stream, for taking your time. And uh, thank you to my wonderful guests that have given us great insight into what life is like at DMU, what the students can expect within their courses and the job prospects as well. I really appreciate all of you. And yes, I think this is it. Bye, everyone. Bye.